did my nails decided to go as thick as she possibly could on the dip. I was also just admiring your nails. What? Yeah. Why do I do this to myself? I like. Yeah, I let me just see. Be, like I the, just the have color confidence. is great, and I like it. I like when it's thick because it's you not going to break. That like, and I have the worst nails underneath. Like these aren't my real nails. I have like the shortest little like sad, sad, sad nails. But yeah. I heard those are maybe coming back in. Uh, I'm. I mean, I'm a big short nail fan. Really, these are the longest my nails have grown. But I like nubs, like you can see nail at the end, like cut off here and nub at the end. Well, no, I'm not talking about like a monster who like bites That's their nails me. to the bone. That's me. That's not going to be in ever. Never, Caitlin. I heard it is though. There's, that's impossible. And if and if that is in, I give up. Like, no, like, okay. I give up. Shoot me out into the atmosphere. I don't want to be here anymore. Also, cutting a bob makes you have different thoughts, and now I want to be a mom. <laughs> okay. Let me just talk about how badly I want your haircut. <laughs> okay. I want it so badly. It looks so good on you, and I Thank know it you. is so in. The bob is f***ing in, and it, for all the, of course it is, because it's so chic. It's like, very chic. I get it. I was you, though. You said earlier that, You've been dreaming of that I've haircut, been dreaming but you about can't it. do it. I did for years. I was like, one day I will get brave and do it. And it took the extension life that we've both both lived. Yes. For me to be like, I have so many bald spots and like my hair is so thin. And so I was like, just cut it all off. And I went crazy. Was the, Is this the first time you've had a bob? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I used to do it back in the day. I know. And it looks so chic on you. That's why I'm I'm concerned. I'm why, why concerned? Because <laughs> a little dramatic. No, you should be concerned. I'm concerned about you. Why wouldn't you do it again? Because after I've done the bob, I've done the bob. And yeah. after I, you know, I did the extension life during 2020. I took those extensions out. Yep. I've had two kids. I've been able to grow my hair so long naturally without extensions that I am so scared yeah, okay. that I won't have the ability to do it again, that I'm I am a pussy and I can't cut my hair. Also, I was two for years. You have to be at like your hottest in order to uh, have a bob, and I'm still postpartum, so like that's just not it. Uh, I would look like an actual just like mom, mom. Women are so funny. You don't think you're at your hottest right now? I think you're the hottest you've ever looked. That is so nice. I, I you mean have it. not seen me naked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. I, I'm only going to get hotter, Caitlin Trust. I love that. <laughs> I love your confidence for that, too. I seriously went on a bit of a spiral yesterday because people on my Instagram were telling me I looked old. And I was like, what? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I've cracked the code of these trolls. And it's hilarious if I actually think about it because they know that's my fear. They know my fear is looking old and aging. Mm -hmm. So that's where they're like, let's get her right in the heart. Right. And just... <laughs> And so they do that knowing that that's going to – so then they double down on telling me I look old. Do you – okay, I, I fully believe that's a thing. Yeah. I've noticed that certain influencers, when they do talk about something that they're insecure about, which normally you would think is the right move. So, like, you're getting right. ahead of it. Right. You know, like, you're <laughs> yeah. getting ahead of it. Yeah. But I've noticed that when people talk about what they're insecure about, yeah. then all the people go into their comment section and start talking about that thing. Yes. Do you have mean followers? Honestly, I – I'm not blaming Jason for this, but the Jason supporters are so That's what it is. mean to me. Yeah. And it's not his fault, obviously. Right. But the ones that are like, team Jason, I'm like, there's no, there doesn't need, there's to, be doesn't need to be a team. Yeah, there doesn't need to be a team. So <laughs> then they go, I don't know, they called me, uh, one girl called me, um, this one makes me laugh, raging alcoholic slob on a di downward spiral. <laughs> and I'm like, that's funny because I've actually never felt better about my life. Right. I was that in the first week of January. I was on a spiral. I was drinking and I was just like, oh, I, I love to drink. Am, am I then I am on a spiral with you. Yeah. I mean, nothing makes me happier than wine. Nothing. nothing. I mean, my there are some things, but like, I get what Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get the point. <laughs> I'm the same way. It makes me so happy. Last night on the plane, like sitting down and getting, I'm such a bougie bitch for travel like no, i will not say anything except for same. first class caitlin i, I, I feel this I, I feel this truly there but there's nothing that makes me happier like that's part of the trip yeah that yes getting there is part, part. of the yes. trip like yes. that's something that i just want to splurge on yes because that's how like it sets the tone of the trip it does so like yeah you get in first class you order your wine yes. you eat that food i I love plain food. Me too. I talk about this all the time. I love airplane food. It feels like such a luxury. I don't yes. even care if it's terrible. It's it tastes just... better because I'm like in the air. Yes. I don't know what it, that may be. Maybe Watching that's it. Movies, movies on a plane. No one's bothering you. No. No and, one's bothering you. Oh, the wine, the food, the movie. Yeah. I just, I feel like I'm, like I'm just traveling in the miracle of flight. Yes. 
eating and drinking and just like watching. The miracle of flight. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, we are just partaking in the miracle of flight and it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. And the way we get to travel now compared to boomers, like they had to, ju- they had to dress mean, up to get on planes okay. and like not have any entertainment. No, the way that I wish we still all dressed up. Because I think the airport is our runway. Really? Mm-hmm. That no, the airport Hello is. Hello, world. Oh, you never know who you're gonna see. This is that me. That is true. This is this is who I am. But you could. You could. Do you dress up to go on planes? Um, I don't dress up, but I don't look like shit. Oh, I look like shit every no. time. Let me inspire you. Okay. You literally never know who you're gonna be sitting next to. Who you're gonna pass? I know. It walking down. One time I sat next to Jared Leto, and I do wish I looked a little cuter. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I should have learned my lesson right there. Yes, like, just, like, why not? And also, Ugh. when you look good, your day is just, like, that much better. That's true. Like, when you feel like you look good. It is funny the difference in how people treat you in the airport if you're dressed up or if you look like a potato with hair. Yeah, for sure. Like, like if I go and I just look like an absolute toe, people are like, <laughs> uh, next, next. If I look chic and I'm, like, ready to go somewhere, like, people make you feel important. Yeah, and don't you want to feel important? I personally yes. like when people treat me well. <laughs> I personally like it, too. Hot take. <laughs> Hot take. I do like being respected and treated well. Yes. Yeah, I really do. That's so funny. I just, Airport to me is not my runway. It is my chance to just like live my okay. skid life and uh, okay. and like maybe lie down, you know, yeah. in your seat and just like relax, be comfy, be cozy. That's, That's fine. Especially on a long flight. Well, I'm not wearing a dress. No, you know? but are you I'm not wearing, wearing trousers? I want like no makeup and moisture. I don't go anywhere without makeup. <gasps> Not even the grocery store. Come on. Come no. on. No, like, I, I do not. How come? Because uh, I don't like the way I look with it. <laughs> well, fair enough. Because, <laughs> like, if I, like, look in a mirror and I see some psoriasis or, like, rosacea, like, I just don't like that. Uh. And, again, I know that I could run in to anyone. Why okay. risk it? That's... And I'm also nicer to be around when I feel pretty. I feel that. I, I understand and appreciate your honesty. And also, people take photos of you. Yeah, I mean, not everywhere I go. Like, I'm, but. Well, you are in LA. But yeah, like, when I go to the grocery, I have to wear makeup. Yeah. Because there are lurkers there. There are oh, lurkers. And do you still do, do paparazzi? Is that still a thing? It's like they, they're at specific places and you don't see them. Really? Like, they don't, like, jump. They're not out in front of you. Like, they're like I'll sneaky, just, sneaky. I'll just be on Daily Mail and I'll be like, what the f? You look glad and I was wearing makeup. Always at Gelson's or Albertsons, literally every time. So they must just like hide in a like blacked out car and yeah. not get out. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's really weird. Could you imagine being a paparazzi and just like stalking people and taking creepy photos of them when they don't know it? I mean, I feel like I'd like that life a little. Oh, every, you should try you know, it. You know, just like a few days a week. You should try it just to see, and <laughs> and just then you could have like a little more appreciation for for the, what they do, yeah, for, for their art, do. for their craft. Like how everybody in the world should t- like serve a, a serve. table. Yes. yes, be a server once them. Yeah. Everybody should. I did everyone it for like should. 10 years, and I'm like, everyone needs to. Yes. I, I live by that. I say that all the time. But yeah. maybe also everyone should try being a paparazzi <laughs> once in their life. See? They're just trying to put food on their table for their families. <laughs> I always think that about, like, like, producers of reality TV shows. I'm like, Caitlin? Don't be so mad at them. They're just doing their job and they got to, you know, there's there's the trickle down effect where there's the camera crew and then I get yes. mad at that. And if we didn't have this show, that person wouldn't be able to support their beautiful family. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have to justify all the poor decisions. <sighs> it's really, uh, speaking of poor decisions, I'm doing a tour coming up called Poor Decisions. Really? Yeah. Because I'm just get, the people, if you're going to call me a circus and like tell lean me I'm in. a spiral, I'm just going to lean in. I agree. Lean in. I do make some poor decisions and I, I'm going to make poor decisions when I'm 80. 100%. I st- obviously. Obviously, still we yes, that's just a part of life. Yeah, I've realized that the older I get, the less I know. Interesting. I like you know I see all these people being like you know these celebrities they like do interviews and they're like sixties and all that stuff. And yeah. like, I'm just so wise now and so sure of myself. Really? <laughs> because the older I get, the more I realize like I don't know shit. Really? Yes. That's true because you're more exposed to like so many things. You're like, wow, like, I have so much to learn. I don't know anything. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You, like I feel like in my twenties, like when I was younger, I just like had this like tunnel vision, and I felt like I was so sure of myself, and I knew what I stood for, and I just like laugh at that person. Uh, like I know what I stand for. Yeah. I'm like yeah. I I have like you know like a moral compass, and right. like I have like a backbone, and I know like what I stand for, but I just feel like I don't know about life. Well. There's because there's just too much. You still got a lot to go though. Like, how old are you again? 
I'm 35. 35. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm 38, and I'm turning 39 this year, and that freaks me out. Why? Because the word 39 just, like, feels, yes. it sounds old. It does actually, like, have an old ring to it. It, do- it does, because then you're like, ooh, she's, basically, you're 40. But, like, I think 40 is cooler than 39. I do, too. Yeah. 40, I feel like 40, who said it? it was, I think it was Nikki, Bella, and Nikki and Brie Bella were talking about, like, their 40s. Yeah. And they were like, I don't want to dress like a 20-something-year-old anymore. Like, I don't. I want to be, like, a 40-year-old woman. Like, I, I feel, like, co- more confident in myself. I want to dress more confident. I, like, don't need to try and keep up with these trends. Like, right. I'm, I'm just, like, like, I'm cooler than that. No, I think that there's something really cool about being in your 40s like yeah. I look forward to that which is why I sympathize with you and I understand yeah. that 39 it's like 39 is a weird one it's, yeah it's like uh. <laughs> you're right you can't brag about being like I'm in my 40s and I'm thriving yeah you're like, you can't I'm brag about 49. that 39 39 yeah well you have, we all go through it at least you have two kids though I just got frozen eggs I mean frozen eggs are great yeah they're fantastic I'm really happy about it, but there's only 12 of them. I feel like that's a lot. Oh. Right? I don't know. <laughs> Isn't it? Well, for my age, I think it, they were going to be happy if I got more than 10. So, yes. Okay. So, 12 seems like a lot to But me. then out of the 12, how many are going to be good ones? And then out of the good ones, how many are going to actually... How many children would you want to have? One. Yeah, I, I feel like... That's now that I have two. Is that smart? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all my friends have kids. I'm like, they'll have family. Yeah. You, you choose your family once you're, you know, you can yeah. have friends and cousins and whatever. Yes. And I think I could do the one and done. I think the odds of one of your 12 eggs being Good. strong, great, healthy, all the things are, are very high. Okay. Yes. Then I'm thriving. <laughs> I can't wait. I honestly can't. I, I'm telling you, when I cut my hair, I became a different person. They say this. They said, do, do I need to cut my hair? Honestly, I'm not going to. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, my my Bradley, my hairstylist, I love him, my friend, like he wouldn't let me. Okay. I love a hairstylist like that. Also, my Botox girl, like I asked her to do something once and she was like, I'm not doing that to you. Oh, the way I can't wait to get Botox. Oh my gosh. When do you, when are you getting it? Well, I had a baby. Like you can't get Botox when you're pregnant. Oh, and duh. now I'm fo- four months postpartum. So I'm like, I'm ready. It's so funny because I'm maybe like just pumping your tires a lot, but you look so refreshed. Do I? Yes. Thanks. I, no, like you're glowing. You look refreshed. I Your eyes my are white. With self tanner, and I use the um oh, lumin the d- lumina luminar yes eye drops. Yes, <laughs> they whiten the, the whites of your eyes. I have some in my travel bag, and I always forget that they're in there. But I heard that as are you a little nervous that putting stuff in your eyes like that is gonna like you're gonna go blind one day? No, because like I have the driest eyes ever, so okay. I need it. Okay. Oh, it like moisturizes them too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's like a little like yeah, you're just in the eye. You just look refreshed. Thank you, Caitlin, yeah. for really just making me feel great right now. And I'm not just saying it. Okay, I, I like seriously, I believe you. Yeah, good. Because I go through photos of myself every night yeah. before I go to bed, and I'm like, wow, look what I used to look like, and look what you're I look like do now. That. You're gonna do that in five years, I know. and ten years, and you're gonna be like, why didn't I love it in the moment? I know. It's, you're you're so right. Aging is so funny because we. Obviously, the alternative of aging is dying, and, like, we don't want that. But, yeah. like, I'm like, what do you want me to look like the same way I did when I was 29 on the show? Like, I don't understand what people want from me. No, I know. Wait, do you feel like, though, your your followers got mean? Like, were they mean before? I've always had some meanies in there. Yeah. But it feels like the breakup really brought out the Jason stands right. who just, like, turned on me, and yeah. it must be my fault for everything, and yeah. they got very nasty okay like really mean yeah people can be mean yeah Yeah. i mean you know especially on instagram (laughs) (laughs) isn't it funny the like rise and fall and like people could just love you one minute and then Mm -hmm. hate you the next and then root for you like a year later yes and then like you then you they go through different phases of speaking from personal experience yes Yes, it's It's a mind isn't it so it's like you really can't put any weight on anything anyone says because they're going to change their minds tomorrow it's so crazy how and i'm sure it's like reality tv in general the the audience bachelor fans the like really crazy bachelor fans yeah i mean they will just flip on you and then decide to root for you again and like it's it is a journey i think that's like reality tv fans in general. I try and think of it like sports. Like, you know how crazy men get for a sporting event mm-hmm. and they're like banging on glass and yelling, like and taking off their shirts and like getting drunk and they're just crazy. And they're just like taking every like thing that the like football player does personally. Like it's yeah. a personal attack yes. on my husband. <laughs> like, like Bo, he didn't fumble the ball 
to piss you off. Right. It's not about you right now. Right. And like <laughs> uh, he's a professional and that's why they pay him the big bucks and yeah. you are in the stands watching. Exactly. Like, I get supporting him, getting excited and having mm. passion, but like I it's I, not a personal do, attack. <laughs> but I do compare it to sp- like athletes and reality TV people. These yeah. people think that they just have the right. Yeah, the like ad- they're entitled. They're entitled to like have these which I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinions. Of I don't believe, every, but no one's entitled to just like go and shit on someone. Well, because I'm like, you have one page, like life, and you're gonna hate follow or like do something that's actually just bringing yourself more misery than it is to me. Like, yeah, you're you're wasting your one precious life. Yes, on hate following people 100%. and being angry. I agree Sad. with you. I fully agree with you. Off the Vine is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, you all know that my mom is one of my favorite humans in the whole world, and our relationship has come so far over the years. She's she's truly one of my best friends. But that doesn't mean it hasn't been hard, which is why I am such a firm believer in going to therapy. It's changed my life. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges that you face in all of your relationships, whether with family, friends, work, your significant other, or anyone else. And I know what some of you are thinking. I don't have a reason to go to therapy. Well, Therapy isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash fine today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash fine. Okay, I know I've talked about this before, but eating healthy is, it's just really important to me ever since I've changed my eating habits and took out as much as I could processed foods. I feel so much better, which is why a Thrive Market is my go-to for all of my grocery and household essentials. They carry brands with the highest quality ingredients and sourcing methods, and they restrict hundreds of ingredients across their food and cleaning categories. And I can use their on-site filters to just personalize my shopping experience, plus the convenience of getting everything online, then quickly shipped to my doorstep. Huge time. Time saver. As a Thrive Market member, I save money on every single grocery order. On average, I save actually over 30% each time, which obviously adds up. I always stock up on my favorite snacks like the organic pretzel crisps. Oh my God, they're so good. And the Boom Chicka Pop kettle corn with dark chocolate sea salt drizzle. Oh my gosh, I had so many handfuls last night. It's delicious. And when you join Thrive Market, you also are helping a family in need with their one-for-one membership matching program. So you join, they give, how great is that? So join in on the savings with Thrive Market today and get 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. Go to thrivemarket.com slash OTV for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E, market.com slash OTV, thrivemarket.com slash OTV. Tell me about your... <laughs> I don't know why everyone is so fascinated by this. Like whenever people see this, it's not just like, you. That's not a Stanley. Okay. The Stanley Cups, I don't understand it. <laughs> I do. Because when a Stanley Cup falls over, yeah. the liquid falls out. P- dump this, put it on its side. Oh. Exactly. You monsters <laughs> fighting over the Stanley Cup when you can have a simple modern that, like, nothing ever falls out of it. And this is pretty, this bad boy is pretty full. I wish I had my Stanley mug on me right now because I don't remember it dumping out liquid when it falls over. Doesn't it have, like, little, like, hole? Yeah, it does. It's, it does. There's got to be a, a reason, though. It's aerating the water. <laughs> That's true, because you want to see something really gross. <laughs> yeah. See? What? I'm going to do it. So I have liquid IV in here all yeah. the time. So like, Yeah, there's a buildup. Yeah, there's buildup that I can't get off. Every time I wash it, I still can't get it, get see, it off. See, with the Stanley mug, people have realized <laughs> that there's it, it can get mold, like yours is getting right now. A little but, mold never hurt anyone. Except for that... One time it hurt that person and she died. But you like can pop off the Stanley mug top and wash it now and get rid of the mold. But I, my kids will knock this over. Yeah. I will knock this over and then it'll, it'll leak if it was a Stanley cup. And I just like can't, I'd rather have the mold. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to fight you on it, but I'm team Stanley. How did the Stanley cup thing come to be? Like I'd, who started it? I don't know. And I wish it was me mm-hmm. because I'd be very rich. But yeah. I don't know, but weren't we just, oh yeah, you were in here. One of the guys that works for podcast. One was talking about how. Yeah. Some 20 something year old just stole like 1500. What was she thinking? She was just going to sell them for less resale. No, sell them for more. Caitlin. Why would anyone <laughs> wait? <laughs> 
no, but no. Because people no. like are because like are, isn't there like a shortage in Stanley Cups, and that's why people are her. jumping over stars. Because she stole because fifteen hundred Stanley mugs. But I was thinking if she stole them, she didn't buy them for the price, so she would sell them for less. I understand your so logic, that people, and that that whew, that's. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, I that's felt fair. really stupid for a second. That's I was like, fair. no, 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 wait, I have a point here. Yeah. <laughs> I have a point to make, but I don't know. I'm just, I am I love Stanley. And I don't I like, you. I'm sorry, Stanley, but like, why does the logo have to be so big? No one even knows what this is because. Yeah, but don't you think people tiny. are like, hmm, she doesn't do Stanley. That's, I hope so. I f- hope so. Are you, wait, what sign are you? I'm a Cancer. Oh. With a Capricorn rising and a Scorpio moon. Oh, sexy. What are you? Um, Gemini with moon and moon. I mean, cancer, cancer. Oh, I get cancer vibes from you. Oh, I'm, yes. I get cancer vibes from you. Uh, do you get Gemini vibes from me? I don't know a lot about Geminis. Well, we get a bad rep, but I feel like every sign says that. But no, no, you we're do. like liars, that's, cheaters, that's double like, face, yeah, double, like, yeah. That's all I hear about Geminis, yeah. which makes me feel like I just don't know enough. I'm like super spicy and like big personality and I just like, I can adapt to anything and blah, blah, blah. But I'm very cancer. Okay. Like more cancer. A lot of my. No, I get the cancer energy yeah. from you. I do. Yeah. Do I seem sensitive? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am quite sensitive. Yes. Yeah. I feel like you are. And there's not, that's a no, wonderful thing that means yeah. that like you're a good person. You care about shit. Also, overly sensitive people are like highly intuitive and see through a lot of bullshit. And yes. Yeah. And I feel like they're more honest and upfront and they just talk about their feelings, which I love. Facts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the best sign? What's um, Bo? Bo is a Pisces. I wouldn't say it's the best sign. Like, <laughs> like not I'm not talking about. Him. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say it's the best. That's not what I mean. <laughs> it's just like everything I know about signs. Like, I wouldn't be like, oh, Pisces is my favorite. Like, they're like artsy and emotional, and yeah. they're open with their feelings. Water sign, all that stuff. Yeah. I personally think my favorite sign is Capricorn. My grandmother was a Capricorn, mm. and Hartford's a Capricorn, and they just like. They get shit done. Mm. You know what I mean? And they just, they... And they're they're very loyal, aren't they? I read that. Yeah. And I, they see, I see, it seems like that. But I don't know. I just, I like Capricorn vibes. Okay. But like, truly, I don't know. Like, what's the f- best story? I don't know. I don't know either. The only ones I really know about are Scorpio, Gemini, Cancer, and Capricorn. Those, to me, I feel like I could talk a lot about. But the other ones, I'm like... Whoever talks about, like, Libra... Like, uh, no one. No. <laughs> Why doesn't anyone talk about Libra? Who are Libra? Wait, what's what month is Libra even in? October. Oh, you know. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. They're like, who who ever talks about Tauruses? Literally, no one. Negative fifty percent of people talk about Taurus. I didn't even know Taurus was one of the signs. What? I'm just kidding. I did. Oh, okay. Of course I did. <laughs> I was just trying to feed into your narrative there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, got, I got excited to feed into your narrative. Also, I wanted to talk to you about how impressed I am with you. Not only because you look glowing and just, what is wrong? I'm like flirting with you. You are a New York Times bestseller of two books. Two. You have two kids, two hosted kids. two podcasts, had two sold out live tours. What's with you and twos? Two. Two is my lucky number. I had to go, cha- I had really? to go change all my passwords to things because... <laughs> What, so because so like I, I, your password now? I said that two was my lucky number before, and I'm like I should probably go change all my passwords. Oh, because it was something something two. Yeah, like people could figure out yeah. the numbers in my password. It was like your kid's name with two. Yeah, right. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> That's what, I wonder what that is. Like I'm. Are you into numerology at all? Um, I like anything like mystical. Okay, wait. Two numerology. It represents queen. And belong to planet moon. Your queen is what it's saying. That's people factual. who come under this number <laughs> are very sensitive, calm, and fun loving, kind people. I mean, queen that's energy. just like so vague that and vague. broad. And okay, the number two in numerology stands for balance, harmony, and togetherness. Not always. <laughs> Good two. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I liked it. So I said the I saw the word queen and I was like, yeah, let's perfect. just leave it there. Queen. Leave it with queen. Two. The moon. Queen. I kind of like that. Cool. I love the moon. Yeah. I have it tattooed on me and I just I talk to it all the time. You okay. talk to your tattoo? Um, no, the actual moon. Oh. I, I don't know see. what's weirder, actually, talking to the moon or your tattoo. I actually have full conversations. 
with the moon. Yes. Where are you when this is happening? Wherever I, when, whenever I see it Hi, and moon. I'm alone. I actually can envision you doing that. I do. Yeah, I, I believe you. I literally do. And like when I pray, I'm like thinking of the moon. I like that. I pray to the moon. I yeah. like that. I feel like it's spiritual. I know. There is something about outer space that's spiritual. I was looking. They got like the closest picture that they've ever gotten of Pluto. Poor uh, Pluto. Does Pluto get a bad rep? Yeah, like, you know, he was demoted, then they brought him back. Oh, yeah. But, like, now people don't know if he's, Pluto like, Pluto does not have fully a main PR. character. No, he doesn't. No. And, like, he does not get good contracts. Oh. <laughs> like, he just... Which, I love the underdog, though. Sometimes. Pluto's kind of ugly, though, so... What? No, did you see these new photos? I, no, I haven't. Okay. So, so let's let's see, let's see will... Pluto's beauty, it's... his glow up. Pluto got a glow up. It's okay. beautiful. I was in New York the last few days, and I went to this gym to go do a workout, and I'm walking out, and I, like gravitated towards the store and I was like oh duh it's a psychic medium tarot card reading lady yeah and so I just ring the doorbell and nothing happens I was like oh, I guess it wasn't meant to be I accidentally took the wrong turn and then I was like oh, I'll just go around this block ran into the same medium just a different store around the corner wait what do you mean she was at the, a different all of a sudden at a different location yes. no she, her her uh, she wasn't physically there but her other store was oh so she owns two yeah okay and so i walk in and i was like maybe i'll find her here and the lady was like she's not here she's at her other location around the corner the one i was just at and i was like no she wasn't i just rang the doorbell and so i call her because the number is on the office and so i called she was like oh sorry no i was here just in the back i'll come out so i walk back and i go in she does a full tarot card reading for me and like like, I was crying. She was, like, Love that. holding me. Like, uh, it was magical. And she gave me this soap. <laughs> and, like, I'm, I'm just such a sucker for this shit. I, Moon it, dust on it. I, from Jerusalem. <laughs> uh, well, that, I mean. No, it's yeah, legit. It, that would make me emotional, too. It did. And she was, like. And I'm not even religious. No. But, it's, but you're yeah. spiritual. Spiritual, but not, yeah. Yeah, that's but, me. But Jerusalem is, like, more, like, religious. Sure, but. You know, a lot of crystals and stuff are from Jerusalem. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this, she gave, there's oil and a soap from Jerusalem with the crystal in the soap. And she said, wow, your chakra energies need to be, she goes, they're not, not there. They're just lowered. You need to bring them up. She's lying to you. <laughs> she was bullshitting you and it's not from Jerusalem. It's from Jersey. I, I, I would not put it past her, but. It's not from Jerusalem. I did spend $500 on soap. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh. I'm just kidding. It was like 130. That's fine. But it did something to me this morning. That's, I mean, 130 is a lot for a soap. Like, well, it's for a soap that has a crystal from Drew's that's and gonna, oil. That's going to lift your chakra. Yep. I already felt it. I literally feel it. I don't care if it's placebo. Okay. Because that, to me, is that's, still, there's something still about the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she said to take the soap and you rub it around your belly button and then you move everything up. Everything with the soap moves up, and then when you get the crystal out after like a week of showering with the soap, throw it away because it's the bad energy. Uh -huh. And then you put this oil on your wrists and your chakras and around your belly button. I did it this morning, and I listened to like some spiritual music while I was doing it, and I, something shifted in me. Okay, even I, if it's placebo effect, I agree. Yeah, if you feel better, then that was worth it. I have asked for signs from the universe. I. I was like, I want blinking lights. Like, I want it to be so obvious that this is mm -hmm. the sign you're giving me. And I asked for it all the time. I was listening to that song. Lights in my bathroom started flashing. Okay. It's from Jerusalem. <laughs> so, you know what? I do believe it's from Jerusalem. I believe it with my whole heart. I was like, holy shit. I just started, like, laughing because I was like, okay. All right. What a beautiful morning you had. I did. Yeah. And then I had green juice because I'm in L.A. And you don't like green juice? No, but that was really thoughtful of you to offer me some green juice to, like, pick some up for me. That's yeah. really sweet. I loathe it. I don't know why I thought you'd definitely be a green juice girl. Uh, thank you. Yeah. That's such a compliment because I want to be and yeah. I'd like to seem like I am, but I think it tastes like ass. Yeah. With <laughs> with the GR. Grass. Yes. But, yeah. It does, like, that, yeah I get it. it. Like grass. I like, like that, though. It's disgusting. I just don't like it. Do you like an like earthy Pinot Noir? No, actually. Okay. I don't. I've got you I like it. I got, I got like a sweeter, like Miomi. Yeah. I will send you my Spade and Sparrows Pinot Noir. Thank you. I am biased, of course, but I truly think it's one of the best. Okay. And it's California, so it's not Oregon, so it's not earthy. It's like more fruit forward. There aren't that many wines that I'm like, ew. Mm. 
You know what I mean? What about a buttery Chardonnay? I was just about to say, except for a buttery Chardonnay. <laughs> I knew it. But I will drink it if it's the only thing on the plane. Same. Off the Vine is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Now, whether you love true crime or comedies, maybe celebrity interviews, news, or even motivational speakers, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call the shots on your auto insurance too. Enter the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. The Name Your Price tool puts you in charge of your auto insurance by working just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay on car insurance, and then they'll show you a variety of coverages that fit within your budget, giving you options. And that is something you're going to want to press play on. It's super easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to choose the best option for you fast. Just one of the many ways you can save with Progressive Insurance. Quote today at Progressive.com to try the Name Your Price tool for yourself and join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates Price and Coverage Match Limited by State Law. Okay, Feb you, Ari. Time to focus on what makes you happy. And you want to know what? This is what it is for me, comfort. We all know bras can be super uncomfortable and constricting, but Skims has changed that. You already know I love me some Skims underwear, so I had to try their bras too. The Fits Everybody t-shirt bra from Skims is the best t-shirt bra I've ever owned, okay? It has adjustable straps and the material is so comfortable. I actually got it in every color and I also wear it to the gym. (laughs) And you might too because once you try them, you'll feel like you're wearing nothing at all. Skims is truly creating the next generation of underwear and bras for every type of body. So believe the hype, Skims has over a 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skims bras are now available at skims.com, plus get free shipping on orders over $75. And if you haven't yet, be sure to let Kim know I sent you. <laughs> After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select off the vine in the drop down menu that follows. I know Kim checks that, you know? And if you're looking for a gift for your Valentine or yourself, Skims just launched their best Valentine's shop ever, also available at skims.com. I'm having a nice, like, what did they serve me last night where I was like, I should not eat this. It was just two pieces of chilled shrimp. Yeah. Oh, no. I ne- I never do that. I do. Why do they do? Wait. Really? Do you? I did. I actually wonder this when I get, like, the chilled shrimp. Like, it's, like, always, like, on the side. It's never your main thing. It's, like, the it's side. The side. The yeah. side. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whose decision was it to have, like, it's gross cold raw shrimp on, on a plane like i just and who yeah. in here is eating it like i like looking around and being like no he didn't touch it he didn't touch it he didn't touch no, it i you looked around do. too i looked around nobody touched it and i did i was so hungry there's not even like there's no sauce there's no no there was they had cocktail sauce it was delicious okay i've never i've never it this one i took on one bite and i was like this feels good like this feels fresh that's I'm kind of drooling actually thinking about it. Hashtag brave. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I And I'm here. I yeah. didn't get food poisoning. Okay. I'm still not going to do it. I would highly suggest you don't. Right. But there was just something in me that I, I knew that it was going to be okay. Maybe you, you just felt like you had had your Jerusalem soap with you. And I had that crystal in my right pocket mm-hmm. and the Jerusalem juice was really close to me. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's is protecting me. Yeah. Armor. <laughs> my Jerusalem ar- armor. Okay. Do you think manifesting is a buzzword? It is a buzzword, but I fully believe in it. Oh, me too. Yeah. I've done it with everything in my life. I remember Kim Kardashian did a video and she was like, watch out world. Like I can manifest anything. I'm about to do it. And I'm like, I believe her. I feel like she does it too. Did she make a video like that? Yeah. When was that? I just saw it yesterday. I need to look this up. Yes. So I'm like, it's weird that you bring that up. I talk about manifesting all the time. Like, cause I like really, I feel like believe in it. Kind of like, um, like soul sisters. No, I know. <laughs> no, I no, I know. I'm like trying not to like say things that I already have in my outline. So I'm like, oh wait, <laughs> like wait, 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 wait. All right, because we're doing your podcast. We're doing after, your, yes. but, so I, I won't fully okay. like talk about how we're soul sisters just yet. Okay. But have you done the human design test? No. Oh my god, you need to do that. How how does one do you that? Plug in when you were born oh is it like a birth chart it's a it's a birth chart thing except it's it's a different test it's like different personality it's human design test you gotta honestly i need to read up on it more so i can explain it better i get that i am i'm really good at having things up here but getting them out never yeah it's like i knew what i like i digest what i read and then i'm like oh yeah that's it that's it and then i go to try and talk about it and i'm like yeah no i'm I'm, the same i'm just gonna stop you should do that test okay Will I have time to do it while we set up your pod? Yes. <gasps> Perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to send you that Kim Kardashian video too because I truly believe it's become a buzzword and people think that they can just manifest like – I don't think they know what they're doing. No, I I, I know what you mean. Like yeah. you can't just like – Think up like like I'm gonna have I'm, a I'm gonna have two dollars. million dollars. Yeah. I'm gonna have two million dollars next year. Like it, it does, and then it happens. Like that's not how it works. It takes time. Yeah, 
it takes so much time. Like you have to be thinking about what you want for years, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Like and you have to just live your life as if those things that you want yeah. are actually going to happen. Yes. So by doing that, yeah, you're attracting it, but it's not even about just attracting it. It's like you start taking the steps to actually get what you want. Yeah. Whereas like if you didn't envision that life for yourself, you wouldn't have taken the steps to get there. Right. You know, like you still yes. have to work and like you yes. still have to like try it's, hard put yourself out there. Manifesting doesn't mean it just falls into your lap. Yeah. You still have to move mountains to, to get, get to get there. It. Yes. And you put yourself, like you said, in different situations that would, like, I knew when I was, I want to say 14, 14, 15, I knew I was going to go on reality television. I had vivid dreams about it. At one year, I think I was 18, maybe. I can't remember what year Ben Flanick was The Bachelor, but I had a, a very... <laughs> I had oh a God. very vivid dream of being – I didn't even know there was the in-the-moment interview rooms. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that was a thing. And I pictured myself in it in my dream, and I was, like, very much on the show in my dream. Like, I can still remember it to this day. That's amazing. Yeah. That is manifesting. Yes, because you have to be able to, like, play it out in your brain and, like, feel like it, you're actually there. That, yeah, and feel like it's, like, actually a reality. Yeah. What are you manifesting right now? Right now, a, a new home mm. because we've outgrown ours. Yeah, fair. So now I've, I've realized that I've like taken the step, like I've, I've envisioned exactly what I want and I'm just like, and as like different days, the days go by, I'm like, oh, I realized that like I just made this decision because I know that this is what I, I want. Yeah. So it's like, it's doing the work while manifesting. Yes. It's so f hard to explain. It really is. Truly. I tried, do you know who Chris Corsini is? No. He's like this brilliant astrologer, medium, psychic. He, he does sign language um, while he talks, but he, cool. he's so funny. He'll be like, bitch, you need to be doing this, Pisces. And I'm like, I'm just like zoned in every time he talks. He's amazing. But he he can describe manifesting perfectly. I would love to meet him. He's, I had him on my podcast and I was like, actually, I had him on my podcast in my house and I was I like forced a friendship on him and made him go get drunk with me. At That's dinner. like the only way to do it. Though. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to like sh prove yourself first. Like I was like, I just need to get him in my home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. he will want to be my friend. But you're so busy. You've manifested so many things in your life. What's the biggest thing you've ever manifested? You know, I only just like thought about this the other day because I was doing a podcast and we were talking about manifesting and I'm like, oh my God, I just realized that I manifested my books. Uh. Back when I was 20. Like, I remember being in college in L.A., living in my apartment that was, like, right behind the Chinese theater. Yeah. Grauman's Chinese theater. And I started writing a book that was, like, really? basically about, like, faking it until you make it. And it was, like, this, like, girly how-to yeah. kind of book. Yeah. And I still have it on one of my old computers because I, I keep all my old laptops. So, like, I, I need to go look this up. But that's literally what my books are wow. now they're like basic bitch handbooks yeah and i'm like first of all who the f did i think i was like i didn't know shit when i was 20 <laughs> yeah, years old in college confidence. writing this book that's why you say you get more like you don't know shit growing up when you're 20 was your confidence not out of control no yeah like someone should have had me in prison i <laughs> was like i am the shit and i can do anything yes Mm -hmm. that's what I mean how does everyone get like how are people talking about how that's like you true. just get more confident as you age I'm like what that's I felt true pretty, I felt like I knew everything back then I like I'm confident in delusional a different way yes. it was delusional confidence yes. yes I'm confident in a different way now like now I just I give less fucks. yeah like so there's that it's yeah. like there's there's too much real shit going on in life yeah. to care about that's stupid so shit so yeah. I, I feel confident like that mm -hmm. and I do feel confident like I trust myself to make really good decisions yeah. now like but like other than that yeah that's where my confidence ends <laughs> hey that's kind of all you need though I guess that's, that's a good space to be in I feel like yeah I could do better we could be better <laughs> well we can always be better that's true that's <laughs> just that's just facts right there what do you think is the most rewarding part of being a mom like literally nothing is ever greater like yeah. like it's just you can't even explain that the like the love that you have for these things yeah the fact that you don't even like yeah like it sucks that you don't get to live life for yourself but you, you end up to. not wanting to yeah like you want to live for them i don't know it's just there are a million things they're like built-in best friends they're just like i mean yours are pretty 
it's just it's amazing okay you're selling me on it it like there is nothing better but like if you don't i do tell people this though like if you're somebody that doesn't desire that like I that doesn't that it. don't want kids and like don't do it i don't think it's for everyone and you don't yeah. know what you don't know that's so true i go back and forth all the time because i'm like i just want to be in like a good healthy relationship to have a baby i just have so many fears my brain always goes to doomsday and worst case scenario okay that yeah no you can't do yeah and i, I can't even imagine what would that turn into like intrusive thoughts wise what if i did have because i like, I can't even handle a thought of, like, my dog. What if my dog hurt its paw and I didn't know and he couldn't communicate to me and she, he was just walking around with a little sore paw? That makes me, like, want to cry. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> I think I do have a superpower where I'm able to, like... Turn it off? Yeah. Because like when I gears. feel an intrusive thought coming yeah. in like that, I fully don't let it. Oh. Like, because I don't... Nice. I wouldn't know how to actually, like, function as a human being if I just, like, let the intrusive mom thoughts yeah take over i wouldn't we would not leave the house yeah okay so you maybe that's what i need to work on if i want to be a, a parent is my intrusive thoughts because I mean, they are dark yeah work on that yeah. you know go see that lady which one i've got the jerusalem lady oh yeah her i'm like which one i've got I a feel therapist like... a spiritual coach a medium <laughs> three yeah. psychics oh come on one of them's gonna be able to help you with your intrusive they, thoughts well they all <laughs> tell me that i they see a girl a baby girl Every single one of them has told me I have a baby girl waiting. Oh, I know. Sweet. I know. And and I'm talking like to the point where I'm like, five of you have told me that now. Yeah. Wait, that's so special. I have a boy. I'm, I'm never <sighs> using Jerusalem soap again. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, everything is a lie. But yeah, the, every single one, I'm like, okay. That's really exciting. Before I got pregnant with Hartford, I had my psychic on my podcast. Shout out uh, Chris Medina. Yeah. And he told me, he was oh, like, that name. he's like, next next year, I see you getting pregnant with a girl. And I did. Holy crap. Yeah. That's so crazy. When psychics are right and it's when they're good. When they're right and they're, they're really right and it's like wild. Yeah. When you, there's no denying it. It's, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's so wild. I wanted to ask you what sex life is like after two kids. Oh, Jesus. Because I find that everybody my, all my friends have kids all uh -huh. of them have two kids actually it's okay really crazy but they're like they go it's just one of those ebbs and flows type things but i'm like that kind of happens even without kids correct yeah i actually fully agree with that like yeah. as time goes on even if you don't have children like you lose the yeah the initial like intense lust yeah like the like i have the to have you even if like, i'm on yeah. my period yeah yeah what is that like literally no like yeah. don't if i'm on my period do not touch me you like, don't even absolutely not in my yeah, like i can't believe that like i used to have sex on my period yeah. like that that used to be me i know because um, you're like we love each other that much yeah and this is never gonna go away we're yeah. gonna want to have sex oh my god seven times a day every day for the rest of our lives yeah no, no you're not no no you're not kids or not this is this is where kids, where it makes it complicated. So uh, you run out of time yeah. when you have two children because yeah. one of you is on the other one. Yeah. One of like one of you has to have each kid. Yeah. Conquer, and then divide and conquer. Exactly. Yeah. By the end of the day, I personally am touched out. I'm talked out. Yeah. I'm emotioned out. I like. I'm drained. Yeah. I'm a shell of myself. But that's also because I am in the like thick of it i have a three-year-old yeah. and a four-month-old so i know that it's i'm drained at the end of the day without that and so i always think about moms in those situations i'm like and even if you got sick you can't take a sick day no shit no that's it's crazy disgusting yeah. it's like it's cruel yeah i miss that type of drained the one that you're talking about where like mm. where you don't have kids and you're drained at the end of the day and i can just crawl into bed and like watch what you little, want yeah. do what you yeah. want like relax mm -hmm. like that's like where it gets hard but i also yeah. know it's temporary like even when i just like had hartford it was hard to like feel sexual in the beginning but yeah. then as she like got older it was like oh we're like getting back into the rhythm in our routine yeah. and how we figured out when to get it in and when, you know, so like, yeah. I know that there will come a time where it's more frequent, but right now, like I'm fully fine with like once every two weeks. Oh, oh yeah. Whoa. That seems like a lot. 
<laughs> my husband would beg to differ. Like, <laughs> it's like literally a source you know, of contention are, in our house. Men like, are so different. Men are so different. Yeah. No, I'm good. Twice uh, a month, yeah. I'm, I'm good right now. That's. <laughs> I honestly think that's actually quite impressive because Thank you. Bo, I hope Bo listens to this. Yeah, we'll get. We'll. S- I'm gonna send him a little clip. Yeah, I was gonna say we'll cut this clip. Mm-hmm. And I'll because I get that way in like. Like a year and a half into a relationship, I'm like once every two weeks is fine. Okay, that makes me feel so much better. Yeah, I don't. I don't need it. I feel like I'm dropping the ball. Even though I just said on my last podcast, I've been like, like lately, I'm like, I think I got it back. Like I like want it. Did you ever lose it? Yeah, you oh, did. Yeah, it was gone. I thought I was asexual. I literally thought I was asexual, and I thought while like, you were in your relationship, or once, once. That was the end of the relationship. The end of the relationship. I was like, I think I'm just not um, attracted to... I was like, I think at this point I am I could see myself more with a woman. I actually thought that. Really? Than a man. I was like, because I, I get it. Like, I think women are hot and I could, I could do that. I just was like, well, I guess this is it. And I was fine with it. But then once I started, like, going on a couple dates, I was like, oh. And so, like, right away, the dates were good? Well, because I, I feel like it's, it's I didn't really scary jump into, there. like, dating a bunch. I, uh, I was, like, more flirting at first. And then I, but I had that urge to, like, I was like, ooh, I kind of would like to hook up. I would like his pee yeah, in, in the V. The V. Yeah. 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 I, and I thought, that was, I was really proud of myself for that because I was like, okay, I'm not the desert down there. Caitlin got her groove back. She, yeah. She did. <laughs> she did, ladies and gentlemen. Never mind. Good for you. This is why I can't write a book. I understand that, yeah. too. It's, but, you know, it sucks sometimes. It's just, it's the world we live in where, like, things get spun. Oh. Taken out of context, put in a headline that doesn't make sense, and people start believing that little line that they read, and they don't know what you're Crazy. talking about. And so then you just, you're like, I want to say everything, but now I feel like I can't say anything at all. That, there was a cheating rumor about me that I cheated on Jason, and I was like, I will take any rumor about myself except for that one. Like, I would not cheat, and that, like, Did you say anything? Me. I ended up saying something. There was, like, some Bachelor account that was claiming that I did. Yeah. And I was like, hey, like, I, there's a lot of nasty comments in here, but just one thing is for sure. I was like, I swear on my dog's life. I yeah. did not. There was no cheating. Squash that rumor right now because there was zero cheating that went on. Not even emotional. So These accounts don't even, but the, these accounts can literally post whatever they want. Oh, I know. They're I, not verified. Okay, uh, you guys, like, I don't mean verified as in, like, they have the blue check mark i mean like yeah you never you don't even know who's behind them yes they could they literally could be just making shit up do you still love your husband what what What? is that one of your questions (laughs) my girlfriends all tell me if you have babies get ready to hate your husband and i am like just trying to work through a lot of my own fears here okay all right so listen no they're not wrong they're not wrong written down or how much of couple goals you guys are and how cute you are and how i want to be like that okay that's that's so nice um (laughs) you're (laughs) literally thought you wrote down do you still love your husband what's your secret okay your friends are not wrong. Okay. There are going to be moments where you're like, you whether it's because of your hormones, yeah. like after you have a baby are just like going crazy Everywhere. or because like as mothers, as the one that has to carry the child and like all that, you just by default, it doesn't matter how much your husband or your partner yeah. does, by default, you have to do so yeah. much more. Yeah. And so then when you already like, feel like you your body isn't your own anymore because it's been a host for something else yeah. and you look completely different you your mind is is completely different yeah. your heart's different everything is different the second that you get pregnant and yeah. then have a baby and then on top of that you have this baby and then it's pretty much up to you the mom to like fully take care of this oh, yeah. baby the baby needs you. you then you also hate the way you look and feel mm. and so you just look at your husband like you don't have like yeah, you, you get resentful. That makes so much sense. But that doesn't last forever. Yeah, that, that's, that's they just also like a little, say that. That's like a little. That's a phase. Okay. And and it's not like it's like every day feels that way. Yeah. They're just like little moments. But once like the kids get a little older, even now that Messer's four months, like I don't feel like that anymore because yeah. Bo can do so much more because Messer doesn't need just me. Yes. You know? Yes. I get no, I get that. I just I am just looking for a little bit of hope here and you're giving it to me. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. You are. I feel like you guys are very cute and I'm Thank you. We have to work at it though. Yeah, of course. And like we still like fight and argue and like want to kill each other all the time. But so. that's that you would not be human if you didn't. I don't know. There are couples that don't fight. I don't believe it. Actually my dad and my stepmom don't it weirds me out. Isn't that insane? It, yes. Like, how understand. can you just, like... And they're both retired, so they're just spending all their time with each other. Like, how? Uh, 
I couldn't do it. How? I couldn't do it. I just, it's not in me. So I went to my Instagram story to get some questions from people. They're very excited that you're on the pod. Somebody wanted to know if you have ever done a tattoo tour <laughs> or if you would ever tell like your story. You know, like, have you seen that on Instagram or TikTok where people do a tattoo tour? I don't have any tattoos. You don't? No. Well, somebody doesn't know. who. Maybe they're asking me. E probably you. Oh, it was probably for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, yeah, right. they're really excited about having me on your podcast. Also, <laughs> lots of interesting questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly, that one I just was like, I thought maybe you had tattoos. No. Not one. Not one. Would you ever? No. No. I have gone so far that, like, literally, there's nothing I like. I'm, like, fascinated by people who get tattoos. And my husband's, like, fully covered. He has yeah. a, a million tattoos. Yeah. I just can't imagine liking something enough to be like, wow, I love umbrellas so much that I need to get that <laughs> umbrella on my leg. That's like, not why I get tattoos, though. I don't do it because I love those things so much. But mine, you, Do you like aesthetic purposes? I actually should do a tattoo tour just to show people how dumb they are and how I actually still like them. You do really like all the tattoos that I you like still have. I have teardrops here so that I could do this because I thought it was funny. I still think it's funny. It was 18 years ago. Okay. I've got a LOL. I've got one that I really need touched up, a fairy, because I'm a godmother to my favorite little boy. Okay, so Chandler. that is a that's a sentimental one. Like I, you love your role as a godparent so much that yeah. you got that, that. Yeah, that wasn't sentimental. That, the rose, I was like, th I thought I'd never. I was angry at roses after the show, and um, I was like, I never want to see a rose again. And then I was like, wait, that was a very pivotal moment in my life that really changed everything and like set me on a different trajectory into like success. And so I was like, Rose. Okay. But, I mean, I could keep going, but I'm, it's, this, this is, is a bar stamp. From what? Going to the bar in New York. <laughs> so it may look like a cool tattoo. It's it, not. It looks like you just set your arm down on some writing. Yeah. And it, and it's a little dirty. And you well, gotta... as you could tell, I did not want to wash off my spray tan. No, I, I still so... think your spray tan's great. This wow. is the thing. I maybe ch I am a, maybe I am a mess. No, you're not. Okay. You're not. Yeah. I change, like, my taste in, in in jewelry too often. Yeah. That, like, what? Why I would it. I think that, like, I, I the tattoos that I get, I wouldn't change my Are mind. Are you an extreme person? I don't think. Okay. Yeah, no, you're not. I don't. That makes sense. I No, I respect that. Stupid question. <laughs> um, do you love your husband? <laughs> <laughs> so, do you love your husband? <laughs> Would you support your kids if they wanted to do reality TV? Yeah, I'm not. I feel like I have to. I would support my kids regardless of yeah. what it is that they want. Like even That's if it was like to be on OnlyFans, it's like yeah. You know, you gotta let people be who they are. I agree. I like. I can't control. Have you seen the the Kelsey documentary of the the um, Travis and no? Jason but King? that is actually something that I do want to watch. I swear. Yes. Even though I don't like sports. No, uh, but I think they are like. I think the mom really encouraged them to be who they truly are, and I. I've never seen it, but this is just what I'm gathering from the internet. And I feel like that's something that I would like to be as a parent. I fully agree yeah. with you. Yeah. That is like, if someone were to ask me like, what is your parenting philosophy? That's like what it is. Like, I hope that mm -hmm. my kids are happy. Like they lead happy lives. And mm -hmm. I hope that they just feel confident to be themselves. Well, they will because you. Because they got me. Because they got you. They got me. Yeah. One word to describe Lisa Vanderpump. Regal. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is regal. She really is. Imagine her with a bob. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait. No. I can't. You can't? She's had the same hairstyle for... That's true. It's iconic. Yeah. Like, I can't picture her with a bob. That's true. I can't. I actually can. But that's because she just seems so chic to me. And, no, and she could carry anything off. Anything. But I just, like, can't think of, like, her with a different that's hairstyle. That's true. I do love her iconic hair. Do you want more kids? Um, I always thought I did until now. <laughs> um, because yeah. I realized that unless, like, half a billion dollars. Right. Half a billion. Yeah. Okay. Lands in my lap. Yeah. Like, I want to be able to give my kids, like, the exp like so many experiences i want to be able to travel with my husband again and my kids like i want to be able to yes i get that you know and like you get that. you can't that easily you can but like it, it's so much harder when you yeah. add a third like even like even yesterday like we take them out to go someplace and i'm like one of us has to be on one what the f do yeah, what do you do when you have a third <laughs> what do you do that's so true so like unless i can afford multiple nannies to fly with me everywhere yeah, yeah. wherever we go yeah I think I'm I think we're done with 
the two, but like never say never. Honestly, yeah, that's I mean never say never. I just heard a friend of a friend was snipped and got they got pregnant. Uh, yeah. I think he lied. <laughs> Like, yeah. I think he lied. He actually didn't get snipped. Yeah. He just wanted another baby. True psychopath behavior. Like, I just, like, feel like how that, that can't be possible. No, I that think happens. it is. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, it happens. That would happen to me. No, that would 100% happen to me then. Well, that would mean that you were meant to. Okay. Last thing. I like to play this game called How Do You Proceed, where I just give you a scenario and you tell me what you'd do in that scenario. Okay. And it's really weird. Okay. Okay, you get stuck in an elevator with two of your least favorite people. How do you proceed? <laughs> I'm trying to think of, like, people that I really don't like. Okay, hold on. Let me think of some people. I'm, like, trying to put my mind reading oh my hat on right now. I'm like. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Damn, I don't. Oh, my God. Am I making you uncomfortable? Yeah. Sorry. I don't like this negativity. But maybe I was setting you up for a spin zone where I, you would ask them how they are and wish them well. I, I would, it would be two, it would be two routes. Okay. okay. If I like, okay. if I'm like, I really don't like these people, I'm going to be the stronger one and mm -hmm. be silent and really torture them and make them feel like worthless. Like, I'm not even <laughs> going to give you a conversation, even though we are stuck in this elevator together. If they said, how's it going? You'd just be like. It's great. Like, that one word. Great. And just, like, make it, like, I'm so, like, you are so mm. uninteresting to me that, like, I, I love that. That even in this f***ing elevator yeah. that we are stuck in, I would rather be alone with my thoughts <laughs> staring at the wall than you just talk turn, to you. You just turn into the corner. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would do. I would just, like... I think that's probably... Start humming. That's probably would be my route. Or I would go rogue. Yeah. <laughs> And just be like, hey, let's hash it out. Like it would, yeah. I would go, ro I would go, or I'd go rogue. Like it's one, there's nothing in the middle. You like check for cameras and then you're like, this is my chance. We're in a box and I'm just going to say everything I've ever thought of. That's funny. You're at a restaurant with your family and the people at the table next to you start taking your picture. How do you proceed? <gasps> oh no. And I can tell. Yeah. You, I can tell. Like obviously that's happened before. But yeah. like normally I'm, I'm kind of oblivious and and my husband's like aware on my behalf. Yeah. I don't know if I would I, I actually like kind of am like a little chicken shit sometimes because <laughs> really? because this is why. Because all of these social media accounts that post every interaction yeah. that a, a yes. follower or a fan has with someone like yeah. like we were just talking about like can be made to be something that it's not. So if I were to actually be like, I, can you delete that photo? Like, I know you just took a photo. Yeah. It, I could piss that person off so much oh, yeah. that they run to Dumois or yeah. wherever the f Yeah. And then just, like, tell a lie. Yeah. Because I've fueled their anger. Yeah. So, like, they, they make it, they make me sound worse than I am that sometimes I'm like, it's not even worth it. Like, yeah. it's not even worth fighting. Like, they have too much power. I agree. <laughs> I've given them too much power, but it is what it is I right agree. now. I'd rather just like not rock the boat at this point. Someone took a sneaky photo of me at dinner the other night and I saw it and then they it got posted somewhere and they were like, yeah, she glared at me for taking the photo. I was like, no, I was just really uncomfortable because I, I was like, because someone's taking, I was like, I see you taking the photo of me. I'm uncomfortable. I feel violated. Yes. <laughs> you know, sometimes I will say this. I have actually in the past when I've caught someone doing that, I have said, do you want to take a selfie? Yeah, I have said that too. Because it's like. Yeah, Dude. I just feel I feel uncomfy when people are like sneaky. Like I'm like, no shit. Yeah. Who in the world <laughs> yeah. wants their photograph taken behind no. their back? No, not me. Bless you, paparazzi. <laughs> you're for your hard work. Thank you. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers to the paparazzi community. Um, okay, last one. You randomly wake up one day with the ability to read minds. How do you proceed? It would honestly kind of be the worst, right? Because you like can't turn it off. Yeah, like, I've seen What Women movie. Want. I love yeah, that movie. Mel, Mel Gibson. Mel, yeah, like uh, Helen Hunt. I I don't know that I would want that. I would. I don't want it. Okay. I vote no. You <laughs> <laughs> How do you proceed? I decline the offer. I decline the offer one hundred percent. That's amazing. I love this. I'm like I don't even know what time it is, but probably overtime because I just could talk to you. Well, All guess day. what? Guess what? You get to. Yes. You get to talk to me now some more. the tables more. are turning. I, like, is, podcast swaps used to be, like, such a big thing back in the day. I and know. I feel like I just brought it back. This is, like, now my second one. Oh, I love a swap. Are people, people are still doing this? People are still doing it. All right, great. Yeah. Cool. I love a swap. Stay it tuned. Makes me happy. Okay, Stay so tuned. if you guys want to hear more of this, which I would. Right? <laughs> I would. Who the f*** wouldn't? I don't know. But you can listen to that podcast because we're doing it next. I'm Caitlin Bristow. I'll see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday.